Aries, hello there my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for mid-March 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business as always and start you off with an oracle card here just so we could dip our toes into energy and see what's happening for the Rams as we are getting ever closer to our birthday season my friends. Let's get it going here my guides. Talk to me about Aries in mid-March. And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. At the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot. Just see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. But let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Aries, please. Moving into eclipse season. We're moving into birthday season. There's a lot of stuff happening in the stars in our sign. So this should be interesting. Really good reading last week. Okay, so a lot of you might be in lay low mode or there's someone you're connected to that's laying low. This is also a very beautifully aesthetic card as well. So I generally like it when it shows up. But before we fully dive into all the detail of that, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the March subscriber surprise towards the end. So you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye. You know, I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo into the reading. Let's talk a little bit more about this card. So when we look at the image here, we see this beautiful lady. She's in a pond or a lake or some sort of body of water, and she's surrounded by the various different birds. So the first and foremost thing I always think is she's trying to blend into her surroundings. That's why I said for a lot of Aries in this time, you might be in lay low mode, right? Like you might be spending a little more time in the house. Uh, and I know Aries generally, for the most part, are very much drama free. Like you want to avoid other people's drama, like not an avoidant sign by any means. But to me, this is just someone laying low, not trying to cause a ruckus or cause waves of any kind. Now, if you're having issues with an individual and they're a little flaky or flighty, this energy could represent that as well. Like them trying not to step on your toes or upset you. Like, this is the energy of someone that doesn't want to make waves, literally. But another thing I always think about it is that it's beautiful. It's aesthetic. So for some of us, we might be updating our wardrobe or our look in one way or another. There's a focus on the outer shell when this card is here. So some of you it might be a good time to shake up the look, right? Change a few things up. Nothing wrong with that. But we're just going to put this down right here. And yeah, let's get into tarot now. She could go lay low over there in the pond. Let's get it going here. Three cards in the upright. Then we'll get into that intuitive juiciness. And yeah, the first card, it never makes or breaks the reading. It's just a little footnote. Let's shuffle it up one time here for Aries, please, my gods. Talk to me. What do we have in mid-March for my friends? And while we get this deck all shuffled up and ready to go, well, let's talk about last week's reading. It was probably one of the more positive ones I've seen for Aries in like months and months. It was titled An Explosive Win, and we had all the heavy hitters of positive cards. So I feel like for a lot of the people in the collective, things could be improving, going in a much better place. That energy could still bleed over regardless of what we see in this week's reading. So just know, like, there could be winds popping up out of nowhere. We're going to hope to keep it going, though. Let's get three cards out for Aries, please. And yeah, you know how tarot goes. Just take this however it hits. Energy is very fluid. It's never set in stone. And we could be looking at your vibe or someone at your link, too. So let's get it going here. What do we have for Aries, please? Gods and Spirit team. What do we got here in mid-March? Okay, the deck is being very specific for you. Okay, and for those of you new here, I only read jumpers out of the deck. Okay, wow, we're starting with a bang. We have the tower. And I don't necessarily feel like this is a bad tower, okay? Like, especially linking with what we had in last week's reading. This could be a really good one depending okay I, I shouldn't talk too much yet but yeah you know what towers do they come in they shake things up in a big way what we got king of cups aka kyle of cups himself without a beard having a drink chilling with his goblet having a grand old time let's get one more card out here okay i'm not not super nervous about that tower just yet we got the knight of cups in the upright wow all right, so surrounding this tower thus far is really, really good energy. So let's go through. I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes, and we'll get into that juicy, intuitive stuff. So we might just be picking up where we left off last week, which is a really good sign. At first look, first glance, I'm looking down here. Yeah, there is a lot of emotion here with the King of Cups, the Knight of Cups. These are very powerful feelings and emotions. So you might be feeling those big feels in this time, or somebody else could be. Generally, these cards skew to the positive, 
but we just really need to get down to the nitty gritty, whether these are people or whether these are emotions or happenings. We're starting with this tower that comes in like a rocket, like it's shocking energy. It comes in, boom, bang, a shakeup. So let's go through one by one and really start to piece this out because I have a feeling this is going to be a very intriguing type of reading, my friends. So position number one, we have the tower. As I already mentioned several times, we're starting with a bang. Now, the tower does get a bad reputation in tarot, and yeah, it could mean some rough things. It is the energy of surprise, shock, things coming in quickly. Now, remember last week's reading was uh, an explosive win. This is a very explosive energy, so it's kind of like we're continuing with that. Good things could be popping up left and right, but another thing with the tower, you could be trying to, like, hit the reset button on something or tear the damn house down. Like, all right, we'll build fresh. Let's tear this mother down. It's like giving me that energy. So take that however it hits. But the tower could just speak about a situation or an event coming in that you just don't quite see coming. Now, another thing I always mention about the tower, it is a phallic symbol. It could represent one's libido. So for us Aries in this time, we might be feeling a little hot and heavy, if you know what I mean, whenever we have the tower. Not a bad energy whatsoever. Um, it's aggressive, and if there's a sign that could deal with it, it would be the Aries Collective. Uh, zodiacally, the tower does link in with Scorpio, so just keep that in mind if you're connected to Scorpio. There are big pointers to that. Moving to the center, we got our good friend, the King of Cups, chilling right there. I told you, he's having a grand old time. He's drinking out of his goblet, having a beverage. Now, all kings in tarot represent control. Okay, so when we see it right next to a tower, there could be an emotion or a feeling that you're trying to suppress or that you're trying to control or keep in check. Okay, and as an Aries myself, you know, I always brag about it. We feel things very intensely. Okay, and I mean, we're not known for our impulse control, but for some reason, I'm picking up impulse control in one form or another here. So you might be suppressing something, trying to keep yourself within due bounds in one way or another whenever there's a king. The King of Cups is about creativity, love, deep, deep love and emotion. So for some of you, if you're going through romantic things, we expect to see the King of Cups. We expect to see the Knight of Cups. But this is really good emotion on its surface. If you're wondering how someone's feeling about you, it's very deep when we have the King of Cups here. Now, as with every card, there's a challenge that comes along with this. This could be overwhelming feelings or things that it feels like it's too much to handle when we have the King of Cups. In its worst sense, it could represent, you know, throwing a few too many back. In its worst, worst sense, the King of Cups could be someone that's emotionally manipulative. But we don't want to go there just yet because I see him as a very positive card until we get clarifiers that tell us otherwise. Now, moving to the back end, we have his protege. We have the Knight of Cups himself. This is a card of forward momentum, just like all knights. It's, uh, you know, moving forward, taking action. As with all knights and pages, they represent talking and communicating, emotional offers. This is a Prince Charming type of energy, like silky, smooth, sweep you off your feet type of energy. So you might be feeling a little suave when this is here, or someone's going to come in when we have this Knight of Cups. Lots of love here, lots of emotion that we're going to really need to decipher and take a look at. Uh, once again, I don't feel like this is rough, but when we have a king next to a knight, there's a maturity level difference. Okay, so certain situations, like you could be acting more mature or less, depending. But I want to dive deeper on all this. It's going to be very intriguing. Let's jump in and clarify. All right, let's get a good shuffle here for the Aries Collective, please. Gods and Spirit Team. Yes, my friends, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot, because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that tower here. Really want to see what these court cards are about, big water sign energy. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Aries, you could drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right, tower time. Why is the tower here, please? Quick. Okay, yeah. And I've been seeing this for a lot of the signs, and I don't know what the deal is with, like, things popping back up, things shaking back up, things returning. I feel like I saw this in your bonus reading last month, and it's here once again. Um, something's going to shake the ground, okay? And I don't necessarily feel like it's rough, and I think we're going to need to continue to move and see what the rest of the reading has to say. But we have the Six of Swords in reverse. Usually in the upright, this is a card of 
moving forward, things calming down, uh, things improving and getting better. So when we see it in reverse, like it's something that's going to shake it up. So whether it is a shocking situation or you get some shocking news of some sort, I don't necessarily feel like it's a, a bad thing yet. We need to see how it all plays out. But the Six of Swords in reverse does also talk about circling back around. So something returning, someone or something popping up out of nowhere. And that's a theme I've been seeing for a lot of the Zodiac recently, especially with moving into eclipse season. A lot of us could be doing like deep cleansing of our past in one way or another. So don't be surprised if certain people or situations or individuals swing back around in like a very abrupt, sudden or shocking type of way. So we're just going to put this down here and keep moving. Um, I, I want to see if this is going to be positive as we move throughout the rest of the reading, but it doesn't feel rough to me just yet. But the shock is there. It's like, whoa, where did this come from? Let's go in on that King of Cups. So why is the King of Cups here for the Aries Collective? Uh, for another small portion of you, this just popped in. Since this is a card of travel and distance, you might have the travel bug. You might take like an abrupt trip or an unplanned trip where it's like, yeah, I'm just going to drive and I'm going to drive and drive and drive. Or if you have the funds to do so, you might just like want to hop on a plane or escape for some reason. Take it if it hits, but let's see what that King of Cups is about. Some of you could absolutely be doing some abrupt travel. Okay, boom, there it is. We have Judgment in the upright underneath this King of Cups. So more of this powerful energy. Judgment is very similar to the Tower. They're Plutonian. They represent change. For some of you, yeah, you might be having a change of heart about something. You might be making a decision or a choice when this energy is in the mix. But whatever is going to happen here, or whoever this is, or whatever it is, it's it's going to shake things up in a big way. Someone could be presenting themselves in like a totally different light than you're used to or expecting. Okay, when I catch this here in the middle. Judgment, yeah, it doesn't always just have to be about, like, decisions and choices. To me, it's Plutonian. Once again, it represents shakeups, change, and we already have this here in the center. So I would expect a lot of Aries in this time. You might have, like, a change of heart really quick where your feelings about someone, your feelings about something are very prone to switch and shift and change here. And hopefully it's for the positive. We'll see when we get here to the back end. I just see it in the energy. It's all over the place that you could be changing feelings and opinions and your heart in general, it could be just switching. So we're going to move over to the the Knight of Cups. Heart meaning emotions, okay? Like, I feel like this is a change of heart in a big way, okay? So you take that however it hits. Just know that things could be fluctuating, especially if a tower comes in. Let's go in on that Knight of Cups. Then we'll do a quick little recap before we get into the Shadow card. Someone's coming in here, okay? Like, whether it is this returning possibly or this energy here in the center like there's action there's movement it's coming in forcefully so let's go in on that knight of cups please before we do our recap some knight of cups here thank you okay we have the ten of pentacles in reverse so more of this shake up type of energy, this explosive change or shocking change that we've kind of been seeing since the very beginning. Um, situations could be changing. I don't necessarily feel like this is bad. If This is a very niche message here, but for a portion of you, if you do reconnect with someone, whether it's a family member or somebody else, a lot of you could be reconnecting. And when I get this Ten of Pentacles in reverse, somebody might like come out and tell you more details about a situation that you didn't know or how they may have been affected by something. So it's opening up. So for a lot of you, yeah, this could be like an emotional talk where someone just lets it spill. When I see the Ten of Pentacles, yes, it's a card of leveling up. It represents the home and the family as well. It's generally really good, but it's also solid. It's stable. When it's in reverse, it's like, boom, things are changing. Things are shaking up. And someone could really talk to you about how they've been affected by something as well. So I do feel an emotional offer or talk coming in here on the back end. Okay, now it's up to you how you would want to receive that. There's some peculiar messages this week, Aries. I don't necessarily feel like this is rough. Similar to a couple weeks ago, whatever these things are that are popping up, it might be a matter of perspective, like how you see it and how you feel it. So let's go through and do a quick little recap. And we'll get into the shadow card here, my friends. Lots going on in every single alignment. There's things being shaken up here. And I feel like it's for the better. But position number one, we have the tower with the six of swords in reverse. So I did say, like, things could come back in abruptly. 
whether it's people or behaviors or situations that you've already dealt with, it comes in like a shock. Add that one little niche message aside from like shocking change and all that. I feel like a lot of you could take a very unplanned or unexpected trip where it's like, okay, I got to get out of here. Or you just split, like not permanently, just taking a trip of some kind. Moving to the center, we have the King of Cups with judgment in the upright. Someone's coming in here, okay, whether they're spilling their emotions, like we did have the return here in the center. So some of you could be at a crossroads in life making a decision, making a choice, that's possible. But I feel mostly here in the center, yeah, there could be a lot of changes of heart or changes of emotion, changes of opinion. You might be seeing things differently here, but all of this is energy is that it's shaking up. It doesn't feel stagnant. It doesn't feel planted, which is a good thing. Us Aries, we like a little change, right? It's the spice of life. Moving to the back end, we have the Knight of Cups with the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. This to me did feel once again, like, yeah, maybe someone's going to come in and tell you some details about something that you didn't quite know or how they've been affected by something. It does feel like an emotional offer or talk, and it kind of felt more like an explanation. Okay, so take that for whatever it's worth. If someone owes you an explanation, that might be coming in. And once again, there's this possible reconnecting, something from the past being dredged up, but it doesn't necessarily feel bad. It might be good for you to progress forward with, though. So yeah, please take a screenshot of that, Aries. Let's get you a shadow card now and see what's in the shadows for Aries. Okay, that was, that was a different flavor than last week, but it didn't necessarily feel rough. And yes, my friends, I always like to pull one shadow card at the very end just to see whether it's something that you don't quite see or, you know, something that's within you. Okay, It doesn't always have to be a bad thing. Shadow cards could be good. So what is in the shadows for my Aries Collective? Please. And yes, if you've made it to this point in the reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it in the comments. It's a beautiful way to support the channel and I have much love for my channel members, so... Let's get it going here. Shadow card time. What is in the shadows here? That's just a powerful reading, like two weeks in a row, my friends. Okay, so there is a good result coming in here, even if you don't see how or don't see why or don't see when. Put this deck to the side. We have the sun card. Now, for a portion of you, you might be connected to Leo whenever this card is in the mix. And it is the most positive card in the whole entire deck. And whenever I get sun energy in the shadow section, it talks about things being illuminated or being brought to light or making sense. So for a lot of areas in this time, you could be having eureka moments. You could be learning the truth about certain things or certain individuals whenever the sun is in the shadows. But it is the most positive card. Okay, so once again, a situation you might be going through with that tower or various things could be turning out way better than you think they will, even if you don't see how. It's not just knowing about the journey, but envisioning the finish line. And when I see this here in, in the shadows, the sun in the shadows tells me, oh yeah, the end result for you is going to be positive. You're going to be happy. Beautiful source-based type of energy, Aries. And yeah, that's what I have for you this week, my friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details of the March subscriber surprise. If you would like to get a personal reading done with me, you can find my digital calendar on mastermetaphysics.com, so please feel free to check it out. But for the March subscriber surprise, I'm giving away two copies of the beautiful, fantastic Tarot of the Owls. So if you'd like to get your name in for that, it's two simple things. As always, my friends, first, you must be subscribed. And second, let me know down in the comments what is your favorite zodiac sign? And give me a couple reasons why. You'll be entered to win. And at the end of the month, the winners will be announced in my community tab. As always, my friends, much love. And I'll see you soon.